Hi, this is Mo Volans for Audio Tuts, and I've been looking at Subtractive Synthesis Essentials. And what this has been is a series of videos just looking at some basic tips, tricks, and problem solvers for each area of a typical subtractive synthesizer. So far, we've been through oscillators and filters, and I've just shown you some little tips and tricks that are really meant to get you going when you start designing your own sounds. So I'm assuming that you understand what the different parts of the synth do, um, but maybe you're at the point where you're just starting to create your own patches and you want to know some techniques that are useful for doing this. So now we've got to envelopes and I'm going to give you some pointers in this area. And what I'm going to try and do is, I'm, like I say, I'm assuming you understand what ADSR is, for example, a tactic case sustain release. You may have worked out what these do. Uh, you may have seen them in active patches um, in, in libraries. But when it comes to creating your own sounds, I want to show, to show you exactly how these are applicable um, in the real sound creation world, if you like, and how to switch between different sounds quickly. I think that's really important. So, for example, I've got a really simple setup here. It's three oscillators, an analog oscillator, a multi-oscillator, and a noise oscillator. These are all really things you could find in a virtual analog synth or a subtractive synthesizer, and this is all just going through a simple low-pass ladder filter that we've been favouring in the last couple of videos. Now, I've reset all the envelopes. Thor's actually got three envelopes, a mod envelope, an amp envelope, and a filter envelope. The mod envelope can be assigned to anything you like, as can any of them, really. The amp envelope is obviously um, hardwired to the uh, amplifier, so controlling the volume. And the filter envelope is hardwired to the filter. Um, we're going to keep that at zero at the minute, the modulation. And uh, they're currently zeroed out as much as they can be. The sustain's on full. The attack, decay, and release is on zero. That's how I like to have envelopes um, initialized. That means that you get a tone like this. So when you press on, it's on. When you let go, it stops. And it's as simple as that. So that really is uh, an initialized envelope. So let's focus in on the amp envelope, for, for, for example. And uh, we'll just play this back. So probably a usable sound. I've made it really big and trancy and whatever, but you know, it's it's probably a usable sound, and uh, it's not particularly realistic. It's not organic, but for a stab sound, possibly usable. And you know, if you're after that sort of immediate sound, like maybe a bass, you're going to make a bass out of it. But let's say you want to switch to a pad sound. Now, how do we move from this to a pad sound? Well, it's really, really simple. It, you just got to look at the attack and the release. And if we just increase the attack to say 70%, 60%, and the release to a similar amount, we've immediately moved into pad or string territory. So in two moves, we can move from this aggressive sort of um, uh, very immediate sound to a pad sound. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. In two or three moves, you should be able to move between any sound. And that's whether you're using oscillators, whether you're using the filter, whether you're using the amplifier. These tricks and tips and tricks I'm trying to show you are really designed to help you do that. So if you've got a sound in your head, like a pad sound like that, or you know an effect sound, using these tips and tricks, you should be able to quickly with uh, different combinations of oscillators and different filter modes and self-oscillation and everything else quickly move between these sounds. So let's go back to where we were in two more moves. We're back there. And now let's what, hap what happens if we just um, increase the release. We can have an immediate sound with a long release. And back to where we were. Now that is attack and decay, uh, sorry, attack and sustain and release based um, envelopes. But what about decay based envelopes? Because there are sounds that are a bit more percussive. And if you want them to sound a little bit more organic, we can use decay based envelopes. Now, just increasing the decay is only going to um, take effect if the key's held down. So that's me holding the key down. And that's a similar effect to if we have release. But if I just press it quickly, we're getting a very similar effect to a full sustain. But in conjunction with some release, 
we can let go of the key and have this percussive sound. And by reducing this, we can get an almost guitar or piano-like sound. Okay, so they're really the three or four er um, ways you're going to be working with with, uh, with an amp envelope. Something very immediate, something very slow, uh, uh, and something decay-based. And we can switch between these very, very quickly. So if you think of these as three basic modes, and anything else is variations of them, so there we were decay-based, and I've just in three moves... gone straight back to a pad. Now take the attack and release down, and we're back to a stab, turn up the, dec the decay and the release slightly, and we're into our decay base. So incredibly simple to move between um, envelope modes. So let's have a look at um, using the other envelopes in a synthesizer, and you're probably going to have at least one more. Now, Thor's a bit luxurious, we've got three, but uh, let's take a look at, say, the filter envelope. If we were to have a decay-based envelope on the amp, uh, to accentuate that, we could match up a similar value in the filter envelope. Let's add some resonance and some drive, and this is exactly what you saw me do in the last video. When adding resonance, you can compensate by the, with the, for the volume loss with some drive, and we're going to dial in some filter envelope amount. Now you can hear that that's doing pretty much exactly the same to the uh, frequency, the cutoff frequency of the filter, than we're doing to the um, volume in the amplifier. So you can use it to accentuate uh, whatever you're doing with the amp. And the same goes for sort of pad sounds. So let's uh, have a listen to um, a pad based sort of dynamic response and we'll dial in similar amounts of uh, filter envelope. This is going to fade in the filter um, as we go. Now obviously without that, it's very different. Dial it back in, two moves, frequency down, envelope amount up. Really easy to add extra atmosphere and uh, extra sort of um, moodiness to the sound with a second envelope. Now we can also use envelopes to modulate other things apart from uh, filters and amps. We can use the mod envelope to um, modulate pretty much anything you like. So let's say we've got an LFO and I'm just going to um, dial in uh, LFO number one to uh, filter cutoff number one. And let's have a listen to that. Great, but let's say we want to change the speed. How could we do that? Well, we could actually use the mod envelope. And let's go to the mod envelope here. And let's go to LFO one rate. And we'll dial in this, and we'll dial in some attack. And if you want to ease that off a little bit, we can use uh, some decay to make it a little bit more organic. And if you match these release times up and attack times up, you're going to get similar results throughout so that the decay of the uh, 
the, the LFO slowing down there is going to match the decay of the amp envelope and the filter envelope. But there you go, there's some ideas of how to switch between different sound types with envelopes, how to use envelopes to control your filter, how to use envelopes to control your volume, and lastly, uh, how to use envelopes to control other things. And it's really about thinking outside the box. You can use them to control anything you like in your synth as long as they're there in the, uh, the mod matrix list. If you're a bit lost in the mod matrix and anything I did down there, there are two videos um, called uh, Demystifying the Mod Matrix that I made uh, that you can find on Audio Tuts. So hopefully this has been some use to you. Lastly, we're going to look at LFOs in the next video and uh, clear up some stuff there.